before I left and before I booked tickets, I'd saved up a total. It was very close to... What's going on Team Twitter? I hope you're all super well. I want to first off start by saying, looks like it's confirmed. I'm going to have the session with Jonah 101 -on -one tomorrow morning. So get came for that. I'm certainly excited if everything goes to plan. It looks like I'll be doing the session with him. So that's going to be absolutely quality. I'm going to get a good session in. You guys are going to be able to learn from it, see the sorts of drills that we do, the coaching points, all that good stuff. So I, I literally cannot wait to bring that to you. Now today, I'm gonna to do things a little bit differently. We only have 13 minutes of game analysis, 18 minutes game time. But the clips I wanna go through, I think it goes for like a minute 30. So we're gonna split this video into two parts. First part is going to be game analysis. I play as a right winger, so I'm going to take you through that, my thoughts on the ball, what I'm doing, why I do it. And then the second part is something I've wanted to talk about for so long I've just never really found the opportunity in a vlog to talk about it and it's how much money I actually saved up to pursue the opportunities in the UK and Spain how much money I needed how much money you guys will need if you're thinking about doing that sort of thing as well I just think it's some valuable information that I can give to you from my own experiences. So I'm gonna sit down with you guys right here. We're gonna get into the game analysis. Okay, to start off with, this is me playing as a right winger. We've got a throw here. So I'm trying to hide behind this fullback and then appear in front of him when I see the thrower is ready to, you know, take his throw. So if we play it, I'll let it go through for you guys. I do a little drop of the shoulder and get a cross in. Now we'll stop there because that's pretty much the end of the clip. Do I think I made the right decision? Look, I got myself a little bit of space there just by dropping the shoulder and that put him off balance, giving me enough room to strike it there. And you know, it's a decent ball. It is the throw, I probably, I could have controlled it on the full, so great throw. What would I have done differently? Well, look, if I control this ball, I'm going to have him up my clacker. This guy's going to block that pass. This guy's going to get in front of him. So immediately I'm facing the sideline and I'm left in a situation where now I have to get around him that way or that way, which I can do. But I knew that if I did this move, he was tight enough to me that if I let the ball go that way, I can get a decent cross in. And if we look at it again, if the striker for whatever reason decides to check his shoulder and sees that Huss is coming through there, it looks like Huss is going to be able to control that ball. And yeah, it's a difficult ball to control. Interesting little one there. Do you, what would you guys have done? I wanna know your opinion. What would you have done in that situation? Would you have taken, tried to do what I've done, just get the ball in the box? Or, you know, try to take him on when he's behind you? Which is, it is difficult. It's not easy to take a player on when he's up your clacker. Here, this is a little bit of defensive work. Something that I did slightly wrong here, I could have done better, and I'll, I'll let it play out, but I wanna go back to that because I think it's important for me to look at that and analyze. So I end up chasing him down and you know winning the ball for the team, I guess. Here, I need to kind of check my shoulder, so I'll tell you exactly when. Right now, I need to check my shoulder and see that there is nothing in this space. So this guy, if he wants, can play him there and he can run onto it. If I know that, I can get a little bit deeper. So if we play it and we stop right now, at this point, I could have been there, which would have now allowed me to, you know, either make him turn back this way, our six will go in there, I'll go in on him as well. But right now, all I know is that I'm blocking this pass, I'm not blocking that pass. So yes, I'm coming inside, I'm doing well defensively, my positioning one meter that way and it's a completely different story we might have even won the ball so then i see okay well i've just come on i gotta work for this so i sprint and i make sure i'm closing the line down i'm not diving in i'm slowing up you can see that little motion there i start slow down because he slows down i don't want him to make this pass inside i want to keep him down the line because i know if he tries to take me on i'm going to catch up with him easy you need to understand like your pace, I guess. And then he goes to try to take me down the line. I would have got in front of him anyway, and we get the throw in. So this ball comes into me, right wing, and when I saw this coming, I was like, oh, here we go. And it was actually a very, very good kick. And this is in two sections. 
Uh, I'll touch on the first section. So ball comes in, good first touch. Uh, looking at this, there is a possibility to maybe fake there and then take it inside. Uh, you know, it's a bouncing ball. At the end of the day, we kept the ball and got a good uh, result out of it. I knew because I take, took this touch, this guy was a little bit out of position and leaving a gap in behind him. So that was something I definitely thought about when playing back to the fullback. We keep the ball and I did a little bit of strength there, I'm not sure, we'll take it back. Have a look at my body here, so I take my touch and I worry only about him and I get my leg out in front and he can't win that ball. He's probably stronger than me, but it's just body shape and being smart. So because that guy left a little bit of space, now we can attack there and I'm supporting. I'm giving myself a bit of room and not a very good touch at all. Ball still goes into Haas. If Huss was maybe, you know, a meter there, we would have scored. But, you know, it doesn't matter about other players in this sort of analysis. You're always looking at yourself. That touch is not good enough, which that forced me to take the cross. And it look, at the end of the day, it's still a very good cross. It's into a great area. But ideally, I would have liked to have a softer first touch. And I'm sure we would have had a midfielder coming into this area where now I can maybe dribble at him, go inside, this guy comes towards me, and now we're looking at a situation where I play there, bang, this guy runs through, and then he's a lot further up the field. But because of that poor first touch, it really let me down. So again, yes, think about these things. Yes, it's a great ball. Yes, if Huss was there like um, another meter in front of him, it could have been a good opportunity, but always focus on yourself and what you could have done differently in order to possibly execute. That was, you know, we get the throwing. Yeah, we'll look at that. Good, we get the throw in, it's not the worst result, but right here, I need to check my shoulder. I thought he was much tighter than he was. I need to be aware that he's a good five meters. If I had known that, I would have taken my touch inside and we'll have a look at the space I would have had. Check the shoulder, I would have taken the touch. I would have actually stopped there. Body position would have been like that so we can see all of this of the field. Right now, you know what I can see? Bang and bang, that's so horrible. Absolutely ridiculous, that is stupid. So the body position would have been differently when I checked my shoulder. I would have backed out and opened up a little bit and then I would have been able to see, oh, we got something popping up here. Get out of here. Uh, oh, wait, no. So then I would have been able to see, yes, I can play a pass into here. I can take my touch forward, do whatever. But because my body shape is poor, that's what led to that mistake. So instead of thinking, yeah, wrong move, think body shape. The, the different things, that's what really game analysis is. Yeah, we got the throw in, yeah, I lost the ball, or kind of lost it, but how can you make it better for next time? And it's body shape. Body shape is a little bit better here. I can see the whole field, that's good. And I slow it down. This is an interesting one that I thought about because looking back on it, should I have taken this guy on, take that touch, and then go at him straight away? Because that would have left this guy a lot further back. I looked up at this point and there was no one in the box. Maybe I take this guy on, try to go inside or outside. Uh, I kind of, I wanted to put him off balance a little bit and slowly get towards him and as soon as he jumped in, go down the line or inside. Uh, you know, he blew full time. How was I supposed to know that he was going to do that? I, yeah, I, I think in hindsight, I definitely should have taken this at him and by me just kind of walking towards him. Yeah, I had the right idea of what I kind of wanted to do in the head, but realistically, bang, bang, inside, do it much earlier. So those are the kind of points that I'm going to look at and review and analyze for the rest of the week. Right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that game analysis. I'll try and keep this part kind of short. So when I went to England, this is the first time I've ever revealed this. Before I left and before I booked tickets, I'd saved up a total, it was very close to 15,000 Australian dollars. Now that might be a lot of money to some of you, but to me, I, <laughs> I barely spent money on anything. And you might say, Sheldon, how did you make that? I spent a lot of time doing football coaching. I did buying and selling a little bit, you know, buying a phone here, making $50 off the phone there, sometimes making $100. I used my money wisely. I knew what I wanted. So I didn't spend stuff on, I don't know, clothes. I barely bought anything. So that $15,000, look, I kind of set myself a little bit of a target for how much money I wanted. Before I had left, before I booked flights, I looked how much the flights were, so I knew how much I needed to pay for that. 
I was looking up even the smallest of things, SIM cards. How much is a SIM card going to be per month and how many months will that allow me? Rent, I was looking at different places to rent. What is kind of the average rent for the UK? I was doing all this research so I could get an idea of, you know, what sort of money I'd be spending over there. On top of that, I will say I got very, very lucky over there with Ed and Alon's place where Sayonara looked after me. I paid very minimal money at both places and I was extremely fortunate for that. If I did didn't have those places the money would have gone a lot quicker and then you got to pay for visas you got to pay for like insurance and all this other stuff the money goes quick man look if I was gonna go for a whole year oh, I couldn't even tell you you'd probably want around like my guess absolute guess is 20,000 Australian dollars if you were literally just going to stay at a place Airbnbs also cost money that was expensive so these are all the sorts of things that you need to take into account know your dream know what your goal is don't go spending money on you know bowling uh, golf whatever use your money for what you want to do in life that fifteen thousand dollars that took me a goddamn while to save up to i had money in front of me that i could just go out and spend and do whatever with but i went no nope. this money i know exactly where it's going straight to the football goal and that that was the whole idea of it so if you guys enjoyed this one let me know down in the comments team tweet i'm signing out make sure you like and subscribe now on your journey i'll see you in the next video